Hey, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Two Comic Book Dudes. Uh, I'm Aaron, Editor-in-Chief of Comic Booked. Hey, everybody. Justin, Managing Editor over Comic Book. And joining us tonight is Rich Duick, um, writer of Gutter Magic, a brand new book that just came out yesterday from IDW and Comics Experience. Thanks for joining us, Rich. Thanks for having me, guys. Really uh, happy, to, happy to be here. Cool. Uh, well, we've both read through uh, Gutter Magic number one, and it's awesome. I mean, this is really, it's a cool, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, supernatural, magical, you know, adventure, uh, with just the right mix of everything in it. I mean, it was, uh, I loved it. We reading through, I was like, Oh, I got to read it again. I think I read it two or three times <laughs> sitting awesome. here. So, uh, no, do you want so to talk, talk about the book a little bit and, uh, uh just, you know, give the folks kind of, a, uh, an idea of what they're getting into. Sure. Um, well, Gutter Magic, it's a, um, it's a four issue miniseries and it takes place in kind of a fantastical version of New York where um, back in the timeline, like uh, World War II was fought with um, magic instead of, uh, well, in addition to like conventional weapons and things got way out of control as more wizards on both sides just uh, started using more and more. And now this is the world kind of like many, many years afterwards. And um, it's the story of a guy named uh, Cinder, whose family is uh, very, like a very famous family of wizards. And he is the only one in his family who cannot cast a spell to save his life. The magic's just not in him. And he feels like it's supposed to be. So he spent most of his life um, trying to chase down um any kind of like spell or potion or anything that can kind of help him restore his connection to magic. And the way he's been doing it uh, lately has been stealing bits and pieces of the spell from like different wizards. And um, he feels like he's finally got it, but the only problem is uh, he can't cast it. So he has to find out who can help him cast this while uh, one of the, more vicious wizards that he's stolen from has sent her uh, gang to kind of uh, track him down and uh, basically kill him. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's sort of like got like a race against time to like uh, sort of figure this uh, puzzle of like how to fix his magic for uh, these uh, goons kind of catch up to him and take, and uh, take his head or something. Right. I love the idea of he, he's kind of painted himself into a corner. Right. It's Everything like he's, he's done. Yeah. Yeah. It's like he's pissed off so many people, like, <laughs> you know, trying to like get like uh, all these bits and pieces that it's it's almost like he's almost got like no allies left and he, he's yeah. like kind of on the run a little bit. Yeah. It's but pretty it's neat. Like, yeah. And, but the, like the thing, the other thing is, is that New York is like a huge city. So it's not, you know, it's kind of like there, there's a lot of places to run, a lot of places to hide. So it's not like, you know, you know, he's, he's got, he's got a few options. Cool. To, uh, yeah, it seems like right now he's kind of staying in his kind of his stomping grounds. Like he knows this part of town. And mm -hmm, so he's, mm -hmm. he's in there, but yeah, I could see where things are going to kind of drive him definitely out from there um, mm -hmm. to make his own way. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Um, so what, uh, I don't. Uh, this was kind of in conjunction with IDW and Comics Experience. So, mm -hmm. you want to tell us a little bit about working with Comics Experience folks and how how you got sure. into that and how that process was? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, basically, what happened? I mean, like I've I've been like a, a comics reader my entire life, and writing comics was something I always really wanted to do, but I uh, didn't really know how to um, get into it because you know um, there. Are, there are books you can read and there's, you know, like scripts available online, but it's can, can be a little confusing and daunting. And I, and I just sort of didn't know how to get started. Uh, but then I found out about comics experience and I saw that they had an intro to comics writing course. So that seemed like a good solution. So I decided to take it and uh, it's online. It's actually a lot like this where um, everyone has their webcam on and um, you know, headphones and, and, um, Andy Schmidt, who runs the school, kind of like will do like a presentation and people will talk and, you know, like have a discussion. And the, um, the great thing about the class is that uh, by, by the end of it, 
like each class sort of by the, the your class project is developing your own five page script for like a short oh, wow. story so like you start out like the first class it's like you're talking about like okay well what's your plot and who are the characters and you just kind of like build on those bones until you know by the final class if you've done your homework and like all that you know that you have like a five page script that you could literally like hand to an artist and say hey can you please draw this Very cool. which is what i did <laughs> nice. and, yeah my and the script was sort of like the script I wrote was like the original, it was like a five page, like gutter magic story with Cinder. And it was just kind of like, um, again, it, it, it was like him kind of like stealing like a piece of the spell, you know, and, and it was almost like, I would, I, I would say like, you know, like almost like an issue zero kind of thing, you know, like it, like it kind of explained like him a little bit and uh, stuff like that. And I think what we're going to try to do when we put out the trade is have that five page story, like in the back, so people can check it out. Oh, well, you're gonna make me buy a trade. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, you know, you know. I mean, you know, we'll see. We maybe we'll make it available online too for our okay. loyal, uh, our loyal issue buyers. Cool. But um, we just, yeah, we we don't really have like room to fit it into any of the issues, like as it's, you know, as they are. So like we're, we're just kind of looking forward to the trade and like seeing like like any extras and things we could put in. But anyway, so comics experience the other part of it aside from the classes is there's like an online workshop where you can sort of post up your scripts and have people review them and it's people that are also in the comics experience program but they're also professional writers who and editors who who are affiliated with comics experience that will come on and you know do um sort of like pro critique pro critique so like i've gotten like scripts critique from Chuck Dixon, who oh, um, wow. created Bane, you know, Batman yeah. fame. Uh, I've gotten, I got a script from John Barber, who's the editor at IDW of the, most of the Transformers line. Yeah. You know, so, and, and there's like a lot of like cool people to get involved. Like Colin Bunn is on there now, Fred Van Lente, you know, cool. you know, people, it's like with the pros, it's like, you know, a lot of it depends on how much time they have. So they kind of cycle in and cycle out, you know, like, um but it's great because you get you're getting like sort of like script advice from people who are really you know on top of their game oh yeah so um and it, it's sort of like any any script you have you can start posting so i started posting these full issue scripts for gutter magic and getting a good response and polishing them and um you know we got issue one to a point where i felt like i could bring it to an artist and um get it drawn up and I started looking for an artist. I found Brett who did an amazing job. Yeah. Um, we did that one and we kind of had that one, which we figured like, okay, let's, let's hold on to this. Let's like, you know, do a small print run, put it out digitally and see if maybe we can get some interest. And, you know, if we can find a publisher, then, you know, maybe we can uh, work out how we'll finish the rest, you know, because, yeah. Yeah, Brett, he had, he had a day job and kids. I have a day job and kids. So it's, you know, it's just as like neither one of us could sort of go at it like 24 um, seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were talking to some publishers. We got close a couple of times, but then um, Andy Schmidt, who runs Comics Experience, called me up one day and he said that um, he was looking to start uh, publishing some books through IDW. Like he had this idea where, um, you know, there was a lot of great stuff coming out of the workshop, like books like Gutter Magic and Tet and um, Drones and Creature Cops, which were the other two that came out before Tet. And he was like, you know, he want, was trying to find a way to give those books, give these books like a chance at like finding a larger audience. And he was a former editor at IDW and still pretty friendly with um, Ted Adams and Chris Ryle over there. So he started talking to them and to see if there was a way like financially that we could, you know, make it work. So I did, so IDW was good and, you know, we were good, you know, like, and they started drawing up a contract and it all worked out. So Great. that's nice. kind of how that, you know, that, how that got set up. And, you know, we, st he started off with, with these four books that I just mentioned that are magic was, you know, is like the last and like the first wave, but then there's like going to be another wave coming out. Um, 
probably like once go to magic wraps up and um yeah it's it's sort of like um it's sort of like pioneering like like breaking new ground you know like oh yeah uh, we're, we're kind of like learning as we go as far as like you know what's working best as far as like you know working with idw and marketing and things like that and uh but it's been great you know i, I feel like very privileged to you know be like a part of it because you know i mean we try going the self-publishing round and it's like a very very tough so yeah. you know having like a company like idw get behind the book right. has been like tremendous that's pretty cool well yeah. and you know there's so many avenues now for people to publish self-publish mm -hmm. or you know whether you're doing it online or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just seems like compared to when i started reading comics you know back in the 80s and 90s and mm -hmm. there's so much more mm -hmm. so you have this kind of inundation of comics and how do you how do you differentiate yourself you know how do you get yourself out there so having this opportunity through idw that's amazing i mean because they're mm -hmm. they're a huge force in the comics marketplace and to be able to put to give you shelf space for one thing mm -hmm. for an actual yeah. physical book that's the big thing so that's mm -hmm. cool yeah it's great and they've been great as far as like you know getting me in contact with store owners and like news outlets and, and you know places that might be interested in like you know talking about gutter magic or you know things like that so yeah. you know yeah it's been a great relationship awesome well keep us in mind when you have your next big hit and uh right. we'll definitely do another interview right yeah so that's cool but yeah gutter magic's great um we, we really I mean, uh, you know want to promote that and help you promote, promote that book so mm -hmm. um I had told my shop, you know, we've got to get this in because it looks such, such a great book. So they had both covers. Um, nice. I only picked up one. I may go pick the other one up, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, they had several copies of it, so it's pretty cool. It's good. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was in. I, I live. Uh, I work in New, in New York City, so uh, I walked. I was in Midtown Comics and uh, mm -hmm. saw saw it on the shelf and uh, asked one of the guys that works there to like take a picture. I just took like the dorkiest picture. I have like, a huge <laughs> smile on my face holding both covers. So. But it's it was, funny. You know, it's kind of like a thrill to like you know see your first comic like on the shelf. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So uh, okay, so we've kind of talked about how you got into comics and and uh, as mm -hmm. far as writing, but uh, Justin, you want to? I'll let you. Yeah, talk. yeah. You, know, you mentioned you know while you were talking that you're a lifelong comic reader. So mm -hmm. like, what? Like growing up, like what book kind of pulled you into that? Was there like a, a certain series or anything? So. Mm -hmm. Can I, well, I think let us know about your comic beginnings. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, I mean, I, I think like when I first started reading comics, it, 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 like they were still on the newsstand. So I used to go down. Like there was there was like a comic store near me, but I think I was kind of too young to really go in it. So you know, you have the spinner like, rack. Yeah, like I, I, there was like a candy store near my house that had like like a, like a rack of comics, and I would just go in there and sort of like. You know, it was like rolling the dice, like, you know, like, like yeah. what, what was there, what wasn't. But I remember like the first comic that really kind of like uh, I really wanted was uh, G.I. Joe because I was like young and into the toys. And I saw yeah. I was like, whoa, G.I. Joe. Like, I, I remember the <laughs> first issue I got, I think it was like issue five. So that kind of hooked me. And cool. um, then I think like. There were then like I got into Marvel stuff, DC stuff, but like there's this one uh, Bill Mantlo Hulk book. I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I think it might be like two thirty eight or something. But it was a story of like the Hulk, like uh, at the crossroads, and like you kind of learn about like his his like abusive father and like all that stuff. And I remember like even like reading reading it like as a kid, just thinking like, wow, this is like really deep like in power like, right. like i couldn't stop yeah. thinking about that story it was like such a powerful story that i think it really kind of stuck with me for the years even though i wasn't thinking about it like constantly that was like probably the first comic that made me think like you know wow this is like you can tell some really like strong and powerful stories like with comics yeah and right. i think that's like if i had to point to one comic that like made me like fall in love with like the medium that's probably it and then you know when i got when i got a little older then i started going to the comic store you know hang around play video games <laughs> like you know they used to have those like standing cabinets right yeah. so play, like, 
play like Street Fighter 2 and then like walk in the back and see what was on the racks, you know. And uh, yeah, and I, I was like into like all like the 90s stuff, like X Force and like, you know, Death of Superman and all. Like, I had like a few poly bag copies because. We all thought yeah. he was going to like uh, pay for our college tuition or something, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah, yep. I saw one yeah. of those in a box the other day for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> and like, uh, I mean, I was kind of going through one of my old long boxes from that time, like a few weeks ago, and I was just like, I was like looking through all the stuff, and I was like, wow, I used to, I used, to, I read a lot of good stuff, but I read a lot of like horrible stuff too. Like, I have like, <laughs> I think I have like. Almost like a complete run of like Prowler, which is like oh yeah, this weird Spider-Man <laughs> spinoff. Like, yep, yeah, that's too funny. So, just yeah, so you know, and then like you know, as I as I grew older, like I got into like more like you know, I guess like kind of like mature stuff, like you know, like Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, stuff like that, and and eventually my my taste kind of changed, where like I I, I like to keep up with some of the superhero stuff, but I, I, I like, I, I find like, like you said, like more and more of my like pulls are, are like indie stuff, you know, right. just because there's just like so much great like storytelling out there. Yeah. So. Cool. But yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Awesome. Like, well, you know, that, uh, that Hulk is one of my favorite runs as well. I think yeah. it's like two eighties, maybe like, yeah, the, I knew. I, I late think 200s, so. Yeah. Late two hundreds. I can't think of the exact issue off the top of my head, but I, I like I can like picture the cover in my head. It's like it's like mm-hmm. the Hulk kind of screaming in the foreground with like yeah. a nuke going off in the back. Yep, that you was uh, Doctor Strange had basically banished him. It was, this was yeah. the whole start of like the Illuminati stuff. What they're doing, what they've done over yeah. the last ten years or so too. But yeah, this was the first time that he's like, I got to get the Hulk out of Earth because he's causing all this trouble. So I'll send him yeah. off to the crossroads. Yeah. It was these like crossroads of reality, and then he meets yep. like all these different aspects of his personality. Or, yeah, it was like very like trippy, and like I think I don't know like if I I got it like one hundred percent when I was a kid, but like I still yeah. enjoyed it. And then you know, and then like rereading it and rereading it, I just like kind of got more and more of it. So yeah, yeah it was such a deep dark story though too, and it was like yeah. before that you never thought about the Hulk. Like the Hulk was. Bruce Banner and then he turned into Hulk mm-hmm. and he smashed stuff and they turned back to Bruce Banner. But yeah. why do you have to yeah. think about who this person is? <laughs> right. It's like, he always smashed the bad guys. So it was right. like, you know, usually it was okay. Yeah. Poor misunderstood creature. Yeah. But yeah. And then they really kind of like added this like whole layer to like, you know, it, I think that storyline was almost saying like the rage was like always there. And like kind right. of the Hulk just kind of like was the way that it got out of him finally after all this, yeah. you know and it was just yeah it was just a really great story yeah, like I, cool. I can like yeah i can almost like like read it in my head almost you know yeah like, read it like that many times. <laughs> yeah well those those are the great stories so yeah. well hopefully that'll be gutter magic for some people so yeah um, that would be awesome that would be awesome yeah. right, you know well, we've definitely enjoyed it. Um, I like the the story of of uh, uh, Cinder, and you know mm-hmm. he's got his kind of his sidekick guy. Was it Blackfeet? Black Black Tooth. Black Tooth. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, I'm terrible with names. That's awful. Um, no yeah, so Black Tooth. Um, that that it is kind of his uh, his com- uh, compatriot in crime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like his partner. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it, it's very interesting. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to issue two. Um, you yeah. want to find out who the morgue is mm-hmm. um, yeah. so that's, that's kind of more i mean if we get to see some of the morgue's gang right in this, yeah. And they, yeah they're they're pretty bad so yeah, I'm they're really... pretty bad. but you you actually get to see her next issue so she's, nice. she's even on the she's even on the cover of the uh the, the a cover the, oh, there's, okay. a, there's gonna be two covers again like we're doing two covers for every issue cool. but uh brett did this great Great looking piece. It looks almost like a like a tarot card. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they have it on the last page. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so she's come. She's coming. Definitely going to make herself her presence felt. Awesome. In the next issue. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, it, Justin, anything else we want to talk about? Well, we have Rich's time here. Rich's <laughs> time. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> what was what was your kind of inspiration for this story? Like, where where did this come from? Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, 
I've been thinking about that a lot lately. And um, in a weird way, it's kind of inspired by like my day job and my career. Um, this is, uh, I'm, an, I'm in advertising. And what I do now is I'm a, I'm a copywriter, which is like a pretty creative, like um, a pretty creative profession. But when I started in the business, I was doing graphic design and the type of graphic design I was doing was like very like kind of like by the numbers production work. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really enjoy it. But then when I thought about, um, can I, you know, can I move up to being like an art director or a copywriter or something like that? Um, I would see all these guys and they would, they all had gone to like SVA or like, you know, these like really intense, like advertising and design schools. And I didn't, I just had a, you know, like a, just a, like a regular college degree. And I just sort of kind of talked myself out of even trying for like a long time because I was like, Oh, I just don't have the, you know, like the pedigree to like even approach, like trying to do this. And like, there's kind of like a parallel to like Cinder's story with like the magic where it's like, he's, you know, spent his whole life, like looking at these people and wanting to be that and just kind of feeling like there's just no way for it to happen. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like where I got like the, I guess kind of like the first like seed about like, you know, like, like what Cinder was going to be about and like what his journey was going to be about was kind of taking those, you know, those experiences of mine and kind of like translating them into this like fantasy story that I wanted to tell because, you know, the fantasy stuff is, is just like, I've always been like a really big fan of like Tolkien and, um, you know, Conan and, and Elric and all the like great sword and sorcery stuff. And I knew I wanted to tell a story like that, but it was kind of like the marriage of like, like, like putting these like kind of like personal details into it that really kind of, made me like feel like i gotta tell the story you know and, cool. uh, yeah cool. like really get into it and so you know there's like a lot of a lot of that like in there like like kind of like, like an un, you know undercurrent that you wouldn't really like i hope it's like enjoyable to people without having to hear that like you know oh, yeah. that part of the story you know what i mean like but i think that kind of like gives it like a little bit more like you know maybe like a little more like um depth as far as like you know like what's going on there behind the scenes um cool. so yeah there's that and then like the just the inspiration to set it like in new york um i think like you know i can't exactly say when i just kind of had this like i was like well wouldn't it be cool like if like you had like a skyscraper that was like torn in half and like you know it was like just being held up there with magic yeah and sort of like working back from that like, okay so how could that happen <laughs> like you know and then i kind of like yeah worked it back to thinking about like it would be cool if like world war ii is you know had some supernatural elements in it and you know i think there's also like just sort of being inspired by like stuff like hellboy and, and you know stories like that that kind of like delve into like you know supernatural things in in the real world you know, I yeah, think Hellboy is definitely right. a big influence on me. So, yeah. Yeah, it's such a, I mean, visually, it's such a good mix that you can, like, you can feel like you could be there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's so different, but so close that it's almost real, you know? Right, yeah, it's like, it's like different, but like familiar, almost like, you know, it's like, like one or two dimensions away right. in the yeah. multiverse. <laughs> Cool. Well, yeah. even like uh, I was as they were going through the Goblin Market, I was thinking about Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and you know the, some of the things that happened while they're there, very reminiscent of some things you know from the the books, not necessarily from the movies, but from the books. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool because you know you're, and and we I, I think everybody does that that you take pieces and parts from everything that you know and you put it mm -hmm. together to make it your own. And that this is this is definitely a. Uh, something new so that's it's really cool yeah thanks i i, I once i once heard like one some quote somewhere that said like uh like if you steal from one place it's plagiarism if you steal from a bunch of places it's creativity exactly so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So, you know that's the nice yeah you know i mean like i, I yeah yeah it, it's just sort of like you know it's like what you take in like you know like i read harry potter I've read lord of the rings i've read you know the Dresden files and, and it's all just sort of like goes in your head and kind of jumbles around and you know 
no one's ready to come out again, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's like something unique. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, um, th- we're talking about Gutter Magic, a um, brand new book from uh, Rich Duick. And we definitely uh, want you guys to go out and pick it up. Um, Rich, we really appreciate your time in talking about the book. Uh, anything else you want to say before uh, before we sign off? Uh, I just want to say thanks to you guys for having me on. And thanks to everyone who picks the book up because, uh, you know, I really hope you enjoy it. And, um, yeah. And just like look forward to more. Issue 2 is coming out next month. Basically, like the series is done, so it's gonna, there's not going to be any delays. Nice. Like it's going to come okay. out on, like clockwork next few months. So awesome. Yeah. So what's next? After that, uh, After that, well, there's not much I can really talk about. <laughs> okay. Okay. I do have a couple of projects that I'm working on and pitching. So you know, Good. hopefully we'll have some more news about that soon. But uh, okay. you know, I'm not like this it's is good to hear this stuff in the works. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, it's not like I, I'm, you know, hopefully will not like disappear from the comic scene. Like, you know, like I de- <laughs> definitely have like, yeah. other stories I want to tell and uh, I'm working on getting those, uh, getting those going. Cool. Yeah, we don't um, want you so to be on our best one hit wonder of the year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever right. happened. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> if people want to follow you on social media, where can they, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at rduek. Um, that's probably what I'm like most active on. Um, but if they want to hear, just want to hear gutter magic, I'm also, we're also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash gutter magic. Um, I, I do my best to like kind of post news on both. So, you know, either or, but like, if you want to, you know, access to like the full breadth of like my wit and <laughs> funny sayings in 140 character bits I, i'd say like at our do it all right we'll we'll put those links in our description for the video and also in the great. article uh, that yeah. this will be hosted on on the site so great awesome. um one great. other question sure so the advertising world mm-hmm. is it just like madman right pretty much uh <laughs> there's, there's less there's less there's less death and, you know, I've never seen somebody hang themselves in our office or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit less glamorous than it was in those days. Like, you know, but, but the same was, amount of the same amount of alcohol, though, right? Yeah. You know, but you, know, <laughs> you, you kind of needed to get through the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my next career, I think. So yeah. um, we'll see. Go for it. <laughs> all right well rich we appreciate your time um Thanks, everybody out guys. there we appreciate you for what we appreciate you watching um definitely like share subscribe uh and again check out the description for ways to uh, stalk rich on social media mm-hmm. uh, and, awesome. and get out there and pick up uh gutter magic 2 when it comes out all right thanks all a right. lot great thanks guys okay, okay.